So here we sit, 22 year career, last week on the Hall of Fame ballot. Mm -hmm. How hard has it been to sit there for 10 years and see your name not called to the Hall? First year on the ballot, I was so excited. I was like, man, my name was brought up with these greats. <laughs> <laughs> I was like a kid in the candy store. And then after you felt like, man, I didn't get the, the call. So you kind of like leave it alone. I used to be like, eh, whatever. But my family won't let me. You've had over 500 home runs. The 25th player to reach the 500 home run plateau. Nearly 1,700 RBIs. Gary Sheffield. Nine-time All-Star, five-time Silver Slugger. Won a batting title, won a World Series ring. When you hear those numbers, is it just as eye-popping to you as it is to us? Not to me. Gary Sheffield's catch. I always believed since the age of eight, I was going to be the best player in the world. He's a guy that's a potential superstar. And I was tracking. The magic chef lights him up. And then I missed a total of four years from injuries, and I left a lot on the plate. Wow. I'm appreciative and I'm honored to be mentioned with certain guys and being in the same space, but to me, I just felt like I could do more. People were scared of you, man. You're up there <laughs> waggling the bat yeah. strong. When I manage against you, you put the fear of God in me. I want to read one of your quotes. Every time I ever stepped in the batter's box, I wanted to destroy whoever was on the mound. In my mind, that guy was trying to take food off my table, and I would bite them if it meant me to get a hit. Yeah. That was your mindset. That was my mindset, but Harold, you know, when I look back at that, I sit here and say, now I can see how people viewed me on the field. Like this, <laughs> this angry guy that wanna just chop people head off. I admire Andre Dawson. Like you wouldn't believe. You know, I he never saw his face, I now. never saw his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, that's what I wanna be. And that's how I played it, but it wasn't something I made up. It was natural. Do you wish you would have smiled more? You may have had fun, yeah, I, I but the viewer didn't yeah. think you were having fun. They didn't think I was having fun, but I was having a blast. <laughs> His first year managing the Florida Marlins, he piloted the team to a World Series title. Jim, welcome to Cooperstown. Jim Leland is going into the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. and he talks about there's not a player he wouldn't want more with him than Gary Sheffield. Yeah. Tell me about your relationship with Leland and playing for him. Hmm. Whoa. Man. That, that. He changed my life. He changed my life. You know, to be honest with you, hell, I didn't, I didn't know these emotions were going to come that way. Uh, I didn't know my the emotions were there. The day he showed up, this man put his arm around me, and he told me we're going to win a World Series. And he said I was going to be the reason that we win one. And I took that to heart. And that's why Gary Sheffield is the most dangerous hitter in this lineup. The play of the World Series from Gary Sheffield. And I said, I can't let this man down. The Florida Marlins have won the World Series. And I appreciate him for taking that time to really understand me and say that this is my guy. Just the fact that he's mentioned my name about the Hall of Fame, being in there with him and knowing that I can go in with him, he means everything to me, Earl. Gary, no matter how we slice it, you're one of the greatest players who ever played the game. Why are we having this conversation? Why are we sitting here on the 10th ballot <laughs> and you're not in the Hall? Good question. He's kind of lost in this gray area of kind of steroids. If you're performance only, he's a Hall of Famer. If you're saying even the slightest whiff of PEDs, he's not, I'm fine with that too. I never had to do anything illegal uh, because I'm the type of person is, my uncle showed me what not to do. Yeah, you're you talking know, about Dwight Gooden. Dwight yeah. Gooden is my uncle. I saw his pitfalls in life. And so I made a decision a long time ago that my life is going to be the total opposite. I wanted my legacy to be up here 
and so I can look back and tell my kids, this is how to go about it. So you weren't a PD, PD? No, you? absolutely not. You play for eight different teams. We've watched different players that play for a singular team, and that team pushes them. They almost campaign for that guy. And you are the guy that's always been really quiet. Why are you talking now? Why are we learning about Gary Sheffield now? It's one of those things where I thought eight different teams should have campaigned for me. I shouldn't have to do it with the numbers you read off. Now that I look at this after 10 years being on the ballot, I really know and understand what it means to my family and my friends now. And I want my legacy to be told the right way, and I'm going to tell it. If you heard your name called, what would that mean to Gary Sheffield and his family? It would mean the world. I didn't look at this moment as a big deal to now because it's the last year, and I think it got my attention because my family wanted so much for me. It would mean the world to me and my family, and I, I think that uh, it's going to happen. That's a wrap. Thanks. Thank you very All much. Right. <laughs>